Give me my keys back. Where's my house key? Jade West and Cat Valentine couldn't be any more opposite. Where Jade is a snarky and antisocial rebel, Cat is a kind-hearted and eccentric airhead. Despite these differences, however, Jade and Cat spend a surprising amount of time together, both on and off screen. Turn off the camera! Jade's house is being fumigated for bugs, so she's spending the night here with me! Though it's never stated in the show, Jade definitely sees Cat as her best friend. She even says so in her Hollywood Arts yearbook. Pair this with a few videos from The Slap and you have a relationship that raises quite a few questions. Is Cat Jade's best friend because Cat is too naive and forgiving to call Jade out for her toxic behavior? Does Cat only hang out with Jade because she feels sorry for her? Or is there some sort of mutual understanding that these two polar opposites are able to come to? What joyful conditions or juvenile commotions led to Jade and Cat being jovial comrades? Let's analyze. There's not enough people with originality, so here I am to save the day, Janiac. I do love short pants. Yeah, guess what I love? What? Slapping perky redheads. <laughs> Before we go on about how great their friendship is, we need to acknowledge the fact that Jade has absolutely no problem being abusive towards Cat. In a film by Dale Squires, Jade repeatedly hits Cat after Cat kissed Beck in an acting scene. In Tori Torture's Teacher, Jade force feeds Cat cereal to shut her up after Cat begins to question her. And in The Bad Roommate, after Cat embarrasses her in front of the school, we get this exchange. Can I stop now? No! You eat every one of those bush peas. But I hate bush peas. Why does me eating bush peas help? Because it makes you miserable, which makes me slightly less miserable. Sure, we could just chalk this up as Jade retaliating against Cat, but that really doesn't justify how disproportionate her retribution can be. It's this kind of behavior that makes their close relationship so surprising. That is, until you realize that Cat may very well be the only person Jade sees as a genuine friend. In Andre's Horrible Girl, Jade, who's now broken up with Beck, has nothing else to do for the day. After insisting that she definitely has plans for the day, she quickly and aggressively makes an effort to spend her time with Cat, even though Cat may not want to. Remember that this is just one episode after Jade said this in The Worst Couple. Cat's basically a pet. <laughs> so it's obvious that beneath Jade's antagonistic actions towards Cat lies a heart that knows she can trust her. Case in point, in Walkstar, when Jade gets the opportunity to stage her emotional play about a father and daughter in front of an audience that includes her unaccepting father, who does Jade get to play the lead role of the daughter? None other than Cat Valentine. We know that well wishes is a metaphor for Jade and her dad's relationship, so for Jade to trust Cat enough to basically play her, that really speaks volumes. Then we have Crazy Pawnee, where Jade, who doesn't like to be touched at all and may be a little insecure about her appearance, trusts Cat to do her eyebrows. And... I still don't get how this happened. Well, Jade asked me to make her eyebrows look nice, so I tried to wax them, but when I took the wax strips off, there was, um, a problem. My eyebrows are gone! No, they're not! I told you, they're right here! Which ultimately results in Jade not injuring Kat, but simply cutting off her hair. Make of that what you will. This trust extends to how Jade reacts to Kat interacting with her boyfriend, Beck. All throughout the series, Jade becomes notoriously furious at any girl that even looks at Beck, so it's quite surprising that Cat is the only girl Jade trusts around her boyfriend, and it's easy to see why. Whenever Beck is hit on by girls, Cat is usually the first person to say something about it. I like your story. Um, hi. Miss? He has a girlfriend. I don't see her. 
Jade must have noticed this and seen it as enough reason to trust Kat not to try and take Beck away from her. It's these kind of actions that probably seemed foreign to Jade. After all, it's not like any other girl has ever really tried being her friend until Tori came along. But by that point, it was firmly established in Jade's heart that Kat is someone, if not the only person, she can trust. That's why Jade is so protective of Kat. When Kat begins to cry in Andre's Horrible Girl, Jade is uncharacteristically quick to try and comfort her. When Kat says she's upset in the Blonde Squad, Jade angrily asks if Robbie tried to play pirates with her. And in Star Spangled Tori, when Kat decides to live at the school after her parents have gone away, it's Jade that calls her Nona to see if Kat can stay with her. It's obvious that Kat's happiness and well-being matter a lot to Jade, so much so that she's willing to do just about anything for Kat if it means it'll keep her happy. The two have spent so much time together that Jade's able to do a flawless impression of Kat. Oh, it's Kat. Hello? Hi! <laughs> Are you and Beck having fun? <laughs> yeah, but you know, not too much fun. <laughs> Speaking of which... Hi Jade! Do you want to do something fun with me tomorrow night? Sure. What? I don't know. I figured you'd pick, cause you're bossy. Don't say I'm bossy! Okay! What? Now on the flip side, we have Kat, who regularly invites Jade over for sleepovers. After watching a few videos from the slap, it becomes quite clear how close Jade is with Kat's family. Knock, knock! Why is your brother wearing my bra? Mix this closeness with Kat's naive personality, and you have someone that easily overlooks and forgives Jade for any of her less than desirable personality traits. But Kat's love for Jade goes far beyond plain old tolerance. In A Christmas Story, Kat is Jade's secret Santa, so what does Kat get for her? Oh my god, Kat, you did not. <laughs> They're from a real movie! I cannot believe you got me these. What movie were they used in? The scissoring. How on earth did Kat get a hold of the actual scissors from Jade's favorite movie? Anyone who collects props or replicas from movies, TV shows, or anything like that will tell you that stuff is very hard and very expensive to get a hold of, no matter how obscure the series is. Believe me, I know. So to see Kat go out of her way to get Jade something she knew would mean the world to her shows just how much Kat understands and values Jade as a person. So it comes as no surprise then that Jade is usually the first person Kat goes to for help. Here he comes. <laughs> Quick, hide me! Wear Kat in my bra. Oh, no, that'll never work! Though not everything is perfect between the two. Has anyone ever noticed how bad of an influence Jade can be on Kat? In Freak the Freak Out, after being dissed by Haley and Tara, we get this exchange. I thought I smelled failure. Then you must be sniffing yourself. Good, right? For you. Notice how Kat looks for Jade's approval right after saying that? It's almost like Jade brings out a side of Kat that she herself isn't used to. But because Kat knows that Jade is usually the snarky one, she thinks that Jade would appreciate Kat's attempt at being like her. When you pair this with a clip from the slap... I don't know. Come on, no, just look into the camera and talk about something you absolutely cannot stand. Okay, um, well, I kinda don't like those girls who wear really big sunglasses. Like, your eyes aren't really that big, why do you need such big glasses? Wow. That did feel good. <laughs> Told ya we can come up with two different interpretations. Either A, Kat is so easily susceptible that she subconsciously starts letting Jade's bad behavior influence her negatively, or B, Jade's constant aggression around Kat is actually helping Kat develop the backbone that she so desperately needs. Either way, one thing's for certain. The two seem awfully close for a couple of gal pals. Hey, you better come help Jade. With what? <sighs> She can't get her boobs in the hamburger. You be the judge.
The biggest question I'm sure is on everybody's mind is how did Jade and Kat become friends in the first place? Unfortunately, there's not that much information, but in Ice Cream for Kesha, we get this exchange. You didn't have a happy childhood? My favorite toy was a hammer. You finish the puzzle. Which leads me to believe that they couldn't have been friends since childhood, because like, why would Kat ask that? Special announcement, I'm gonna put these on sale. Anyone who's seen the merchandise will recognize these designs, and I figured since the anniversary's coming up, I'll put these accessories on sale. Good idea, huh? The sale will last for two weeks, so be sure to get it while you can. Be sure to follow me on Spotify, Instagram, and Twitter if you want to keep tabs on me. If you're already a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe to my backup channel, Janiac Junior, in case anything bad happens to this one. Please follow the Junior and Marcus Talk podcast. We talk about basically anything you guys want us to, so it's a lot of fun. Go ahead, check it out. And finally, please take a look at all of the merchandise. Like I said, a few things are going to be on sale for this week. So, which Victoria's character or characters would you like me to analyze next? Let me know down in the comments below. Until then, I'll leave you with this. That was a letdown. Pretty unsatisfying. Not much of an ending. <laughs>